Hello, everyone. This is a spinoff of The Last Sin Eater. The novella for that is out now. Link in the description. Also, links in the description for all of the connected narrations off the Romnex and Darksomnium channels. If you want to catch up or if you've missed some. Later this year, there is going to be a finale to all of these connected stories on the Darksomniums channel, as a monstrously long saga with a huge cast including myself. Year one of this connected literary universe started with The Last Sin Eater, and will be ending with the NFC, the Nightmare Fighting Championship. If there are any avid readers out there that would like to read ahead, links in the description to the author's Reddit and Twitter pages, where you can find their work and keep up to date on the updates. I don't have much time, and I don't wish to waste yours. There is much work to be done. My name is Nell Lockwood. I'm the last Sin Eater, and there is something I neglected to tell you all the last time we spoke. Fret not if you're new. You'll understand eventually. For those unfamiliar, my job has been, and always will be, to help those in town with sins so powerful they manifest into a physical form. I talk to them, I try to help, and I devour the sin. It's not a pretty job, but someone has to do it. And in a town like Sturgeon, there has never been a shortage of situations that need my expertise. Events spun into motion last week. I was cultivating some special plants for my conservatory, feeding carnivorous spectral flytraps some unique dishes. I always found the soft hum the bell plants provided to be soothing a way of intoxicating an addled mind that's seen far too much bloodshed, loss, and heartbreak. Since I was a little girl, I've been subject to seeing my most cherished loved ones battle against their fates, clawing desperately at the sides of an ever-widening pit of despair, only to fall in the end. For the past two years, those events have been chronicled here in one form or another, to try and piece together why this keeps happening in our town, why Sturgeon is a hotbed of violence, depravity, and loss. I once told you of where it all began, the prison housing death row inmates with sins of a unique quantity that needed to be devoured. I told you of what transpired so many years ago there and the losses I suffered. I knew more would be in my future. I knew more would be in my future. The call came in, and I was given the coordinates by my second-in-command at the agency, Chino De La Sturgeon, a seasoned nightmare detective and former ward of the state, and learn as much as he could while breaking down as many barriers as possible. I liked him, his thirst for knowledge and, at times, reckless behavior, reminded me so much of him. Ah, uh, sorry to bother you during harvest season, ma'am. How are the bonsai trees looking? His voice was light, jovial, but forced. He didn't like to be a bother, respected the chain of command. They're in full bloom and ready to be trimmed. Trialing the food for the meat plants is proving difficult. Hopefully we'll have something to yield results soon, help create that serum. And you're never a bother, Chino. What are we dealing with? He made a hesitant sound on the other side, like he was still mulling over if he could handle it himself. Not a usual case, then. I pressed, phone held by my shoulder as I held out my hand for my bearded dragon to crawl onto. He was a sweet, hesitant boy, and enjoyed resting on my shoulder, watching. Not that anything is usual with our work, I suppose. Chino took a moment and replied, the mayor says he's been cursed, that he needs it removed within three hours, and he needs to tell you who did it before then. Says they're in his dreams. That was all I needed to hear. I packed my things and headed to the street for Chino to pick me up, headed for the mayor's manor house. Samson Carstairs was an eccentric, unusual man. Nobody recalls when he was elected to the position... But he was a mysterious man who found skill in recruiting folks to the town and laying the foundations of doubt and concern in their minds. He was persuasive. We rolled up to his house, an imposing structure sitting atop its own private hill so the mayor could overlook his kingdom. 
as I stepped onto the forecourt out of the corner of my eye. I spied a shape flittering from the upper window, stepping out of sight the moment it was spotted. I see the mayor is still up and about. He's taking his curse well. I grip the thick, worn compendium with my left hand, feeling the pressure run through me. Something was wrong. Ma'am, the mayor is confined to his bed. When I said he was seeing it in his dreams, I mean that literally. He scrawled something onto a paper at his behest. But the man isn't conscious. Chino shook his head, the sense of foreboding mounting in the air as we made for the front door, greeting the butler and being led upstairs. Grand portraits adorned the walls. Many past mayors had held the coveted seat. Some of great repute, like Augustus E. Blackwell IV, the man who safely put a gap between the Nightmare County and that of the human population. Others, not so much. Thaddeus T. Jameson, the mayor who drove our people to slaughter under the guise of a fresh work program, will forever be a blight on this city. It's because of him that I have a purpose. Rooting out and finding any and every threat inhabiting the city, or its people. I won't lie to you. I felt like a rat trapped in a cage. No different to the prison so many years ago. Only now I'm older, wiser, and worn down. We stood in front of the master bedroom, a pair of crimson doors with a fine gold mesh containing a wave of thick, musty air mixed with a searing heat that seeped through the cracks in the door. The butler refused to enter, said it wasn't for men of his caliber, and wished us well, unlocking the main chamber and hurrying away down to the atrium. An ugly, putrid green light emanated from the back wall where Mayor Carstairs lay in a four-poster bed, the black veil drawn tightly across all sides giving him the image of a pupa mid-metamorphosis transforming into something new. Madam Lockwood, Master Chino, how good are you to aid me in my time of need? Please do approach slowly. I'm startled easily in my old age. The husky voice bounced off the walls and slammed against the eardrums. It was most definitely the mayor's, that much was certain, but something was... off. I gave a sideways glance to Chino, a man tall and sturdy enough in his own right to hold his own, who grinned and began walking down the left side of the room as I took the right, one hand in his jacket pocket. A small study sat opposite his bed on my side of the room. Numerous residency application papers and planning permissions lay scattered. Some approved and many still held up for debate at the next meeting. A couple of them caught my eye long enough to take my gaze away from the bed and put them in my pocket. Mayor Carstairs, I'm here to assist, as per your request. What happened? I called, sidling towards the bed. They came some time ago, after my last recruitment drive. Said I had a unique disposition that they could hone to their advantage. Asked me if I'd heard about the anglerfish. His voice trembled, almost quivered in pitch. The glow from the bed grew in intensity. I felt my teeth set on edge when they asked. I never did like those special interest groups in the city. Their secretive ways and behaviors. But I thought if I left them alone, they'd leave me alone. Chino caught sight of something and stood still, mouth agape. I tried to signal him, but he wouldn't respond. I was just a few steps from the bed. I could almost reach out to the veil. What did they do, Mayor? How are you even talking to us? I was informed you're asleep. My hand gripped the small sheet, and as I pulled it aside, I felt my body freeze as the voice continued. There was a series of targeted killings not too long ago. Person honing in on special blood. First, the folklore killings, the nighttime garbage man, the iceberg theory stalker, and most recently, the front door camera incident. But they used one thing in common luring. 
I was assured this would be taken care of, but clearly that wasn't the case. Something has been gathering strength in this town, and now it's playing its hand. You see, the anglerfish lures its prey in with a beacon of light, a promise to its victim that it holds untold riches, glowing brighter and brighter the closer they get. A single bead of sweat ran down my brow and dripped off my nose. Fear I hadn't felt in a long time gathered up inside me, and I tried to muster the courage to grab my serrated blade, but my fingers would not obey. Mayor Carstairs was indeed laying in the bed. His skin cracked and peeling like a vase someone glued back together in the wrong ways. At first I thought his chest was rising and falling, but it was something else. The ugly... Green light was pulsing beneath his skin, causing the folds to rip and split with every beat. Milky eyes stared up at me, but the voice was not coming from him. What stared back at me was the husk of a man. Spindly limbs, a hooked nose, and black wiry hair throughout the body as it slowly rose out of the bed and growing ever brighter. Oh, they forced me to be their anglerfish, Miss Lockwood. To be the light that sought you out. I do indeed have a sin that needs your attention, but you are their prize. They found my weakness and exploited it. I'm sorry. A wave of heat rippled through the room and I watched Chino fall to the floor, screaming as something began dragging him underneath the bed. Instinct kicked in and I rolled across the room to grab Chino before he was dragged further under. A pair of emerald eyes and four large teeth beamed back at me as they pushed something sharp into his Achilles tendon. He let out a horrific screech as a cackling filled the room, throwing a small dagger into the blackness. It yelped and let him go, the resounding force tumbling us into the adjacent wall with a smash as my skull collided with the radiator. Uh, uh, Mayor, I can still help you. We can still beat this! We beat the unbounded, we beat every threat to this city that comes up. What makes you think we can't again? My eyes glazed over, and my head felt like a lead weight. But I knew there was a part of him that needed me here. I looked down at Chino, out cold and bleeding. You could have gotten to me a hundred different ways, but you chose face to face. So let's talk. If I can't do the job, you win. You can have whatever you want. The cackling stopped, and the room fell deathly silent, as if considering the offer. The sin is the one in control. The mayor was merely a vessel. With that, the room plunged into darkness. The kind where, despite it being mid-afternoon outside, I could no longer see the hand in front of me. Then the green light pulsated. For just a few moments, I saw the writing around the walls, what Chino had been staring at before. Betrayer. Impetus. Abandoner. Over and over, furtive scribbles that lined the ceiling and the walls. Some areas had been caved in from the force of the writing. Who betrayed you, Mayor? How long have you been carrying this with you? I got to my feet and tried to find a safe spot hand gripped on the hilt of my knife and terror running through me, an open space I was unfamiliar with was not to any warrior's advantage. Another pulse, this time showcasing the study desk and a corkboard with pins all over the city, highlighting the attacks, the spike in strange activity converging on one location and a single word written across it. Buck. No. No. No, th that's not possible. He's gone. He can't be here. I felt the tulpa skitter somewhere in the darkness. The disembodied voice of the mayor weeping. They told me it'd be quick. Told me to keep my mind open as I slept and let him in. That it was for the betterment of Sturgeon. That we couldn't keep facing the same calamities every time. Not after the destruction last year at the tournament. So much death. So much loss. 
The cycle must be broken. I felt my hands clam up, my mind swell. This isn't possible. I breathed, Chino stirring from the corner. Amos isn't here, we made sure of that! Another green pulse, and my heart doubled in speed. You are wrong to assume that he is the only group interested in change in this place, Miss Lockwood. There are others. There have always been others. A table in the center of the room. A plate with a silver goblet and obsidian cutlery. Sit. Sit and eat. It'll be quick and over. I promise. Chino got to his knees and began looking around the room, trying to ascertain its location and stall for time. Still woozy, he was reliable as ever, and I tried to give him a small nod as I walked to the table. Whatever this sin creature was, it was far more developed than any I'd seen previously, and it was fast. Who are they? What do they want? I can't do this without your honesty, you know that. Another green pulse. I damn near jumped back. A pale visage of Mayor Carstairs sat opposite the table. Skin still cracked, but no spindly limbs. He just looked. Vacant. Wrong. His limbs creaked as he gestured with his hand for me to sit down. Expression unchanging. They call themselves the Order of the Grave Diggers. I knew of them and the others, but gave them a wide berth. Special interest groups are a dime a dozen all over the world. Why should Sturgeon be any different? Of course, all of our sins come back to haunt us eventually. His black outline poured a drink for himself, and I began to see the usual smoke fill the room and intermix with the heat. Something began to form on my plate. <sighs> they told me that they had the power to put all of this right, to do what nobody else could do and ensure it was done cleanly. So I met with their leader in the one place he couldn't be detected. Dreams. I felt my hands shake. I knew what I had to ask, but I lacked the courage to do so. Green pulse again. The room began to look... smaller, somehow. I spied Chino moving around the room and keeping watch as best he could. Your leader, what do they want? I sputtered the words out the knot in my stomach ballooning and making me feel sick to even consider the notion. They want an end to all things and a resolution for the pain they and so many others endured throughout this cycle. They want you and anyone like you as properties that can be used to turn the tides in the battle ahead. There is always a deal to be made and someone to make it happen. I take no joy in doing this now. You've served this city beyond anyone else. But what must be done, must be done. The food was almost complete. A small dish, to be sure. But I couldn't see what it was. A green pulse. Carstairs had leaned forward and stared at me. A horrible gaze that seemed to look into me. Have you been paying attention? Because it's all about to come together. One final glow. I felt the hot air behind me and something dripping on my trench coat. It was the overwhelming sensation of imminent death and unseen jaws about to snap shut. This is for the best, Nell. I'm sorry. Carstairs called, stepping back into the blackness. I turned to see the face and mouth of a rotting anglerfish on the body of a sickening tulpa, ready to clamp its jaws down on my body and devour me whole. In that moment, I was convinced I was to be devoured. No amount of speed or cunning would get me away quickly enough from this beast. I could swing and fire or stab, but I'd most certainly lose a limb. Thank God for Chino de la Sturgeon and his reckless ways. In the moments before I could react, he leapt forward and dug a brass knuckle fist into its face, smashing against the teeth and knocking it to the floor in a heap. You know what you gotta do, ma'am! I'll hold this thing off! Landing another sickening crunch on its face. I didn't even know we could attack these things! You learn something new every day! Looking at my plate, I saw the dish. A bowl of California reaper peppers and a glass of cold chocolate milk. 
the unexpected searing heat of betrayal and the chilly aftermath of their absence still burning a hole through your body long after the deed is done. I began to eat, the overwhelming burn stinging my eyes and choking my throat. But I persisted and knew to ask one question that would haunt me forever if I ignored it. What is the name of their leader, Mayor? What was the point of all this? The creature battling Chino screeched as I kept eating, the body cracking over and flailing wildly as the more powerful Chino volleyed shot after shot at it. He walks in shadow and twists reality to his whims. He was once a man with a title and a legacy as the last of the McGraws. But now, now he has a purpose far beyond that. He will bring everyone together. And when he's victorious, all the lights in Sturgeon will go out. And, and the, the cycle, cycle will be complete. The voice grew wispy, distorted and all too familiar as it shifted to a tone that made my eyes well up with tears. It was Bugs. I've spent decades in the void between realities and watched as others tried and failed to take my place. Now, now I will finally make things right. I will vanquish the greatest sin of them all, Nell Lockwood, Betrayer. The bravado I'd built for so many years came crashing down, and as my meal was almost complete, I barely felt the searing heat over my own heartbreak. Buck, Buck, please, it, it doesn't have to be this way. I retched, coughed, and sputtered, the world around me beginning to fade to nothing. Just Buck's voice carrying me. We will settle this at the tournament. Whether it be you or your delegated fighter, I will take your heart. Let this be a warning. Memento mori, now. With that, the room grew brighter and back to normal. The atmosphere calmed and I was left in a pool of tears and spit, metal position and sobbing. I never wanted this. Ma'am, come on. Let's get you up. Chino gently offered me a hand, and I eventually rose to my feet, desperate to regain my composure. I was not that frightened young woman anymore. He'd offered me a black handkerchief, and I graciously took it. Don't worry. I didn't see anything. We'll just say it was the chili peppers, okay? I nodded and looked down at his fists. Cracked, bruised, and dripping with blood. I guess that thing put up one hell of a fight, eh? If what he said was true, then there's more monsters out there crossing over. We're going to need to be ready for the next tournament in a few months. I think it's time we looked into some of the other cases, once we've interrogated our friend here. But as we turned to inspect the body, it became clear we were at an overwhelming disadvantage. In the place of the horrifying anglerfish beast was Mayor Carstairs broken, beaten, and bloodied body, face curled into a deathly scream and rigor mortis having long since set in. We'd been playing their game all along, just for them to send a message. This year's NFC tournament has a very different set of rules. It was determined by the council that there would be an official delegations from each organization operating within Sturgeon. They would elect one fighter to represent them and their interests. The tournament brackets would go on as normal, and the eventual winner would get the unified title and obligatory wish. But there was an additional caveat thrown into the mix that had the entire city buzzing, with many groups both well-revered and reviled coming out of the woodwork to announce their candidacy for the tournament as a result. From the mayor's papers I confiscated earlier were a set of plans for development licensing for the Dusklight Circus coming to town, and a resignation letter dated two months ago. In it, he officially relinquished his responsibilities and instead of an election, offered up his power for the city as the final prize for this year's NFC tournament. We have a lot of work to do. Individual, Samson Ezekiel Carstairs III, Mayor of Sturgeon, Sin, Impetus, AKA Betrayal, Meal, California Reaper Peppers and Ice Cold Milk. 
the burn of the betrayal lingering long after, the chill of abandonment sets in.